Research says resilience and grit determine quality of life in a crisis. But what is resilience? Who are the ordinary people doing extraordinary things while staying healthy and safe during COVID? How do they persevere with passion in the middle of a public health crisis? Join us as they share their stories and show us everything. Guys, as you can see, ah. movement is medicine during this pandemic. I had the absolute pleasure of interviewing Mary Ann Sell at the Open Heart Yoga Studio before. And Jimmy, what are you doing? Yeah, we're at Stone Fit Performance, just cranking out some iron with the great Kevin Higgins. This is a fun episode of Show Us Everything. Movement is medicine. Let's get to it. Hey guys, so I'm here with the wonderful Mary Ann Sell. How are you? Hi, great, how are you? You love yoga, right? When yes. did you start getting into yoga? So about 25 years ago when my first child was born, Carly, she's, about tw she's 25 now, so I've been practicing for 25 years. I received so many benefits from yoga, so much more than physical. Mm -hmm. Mental benefits of focus, emotional benefits of calm and presence. So how is that mindset? Mm -hmm. gone into being able to adapt in today's world where there are all these distractions and all the stress and the bills keep rolling and you have to adapt. I mean, how, you know, how are you channeling that energy? What are you, are you doing exercises? I mean, does that oh, help? Yes, of it's a practice. It's a daily practice. That's why um, you practice yoga whenever you can, hopefully daily. Um, there's so many ways of practicing yoga, not just coming in and out of poses, mm -hmm. uh, practicing mindfulness, meditation, practicing kindness. There's so many ways to practice yoga. Of course. So, um, yeah, we start, since, since I've um, been practicing for 25 years, and I told you about those amazing benefits that I got, I really wanted to share this with so many others that are not able to access yoga the mm -hmm. way most people are. So, um, I was thinking of opening up a studio, waiting for that right time, became an empty nester, had a lot of time, marinated all of these visualizations that I had and learned about opening a nonprofit. Right. So we are now a nonprofit yoga studio. We're on the west side of Red Bank. We um, educated ourselves about how to create a 501c3. We're almost two years old now, which means we celebrated our first birthday in the middle of a pandemic. So right. it was a little bit difficult, but we have so much support from our local businesses and so many beautiful students that come and share their practice here with us. And the beauty of our nonprofit is that whatever practice, whatever um, package they purchase, they simultaneously donate that package to somebody that doesn't have access or can't afford it. So is, is that the BOGO yoga? Because I wanted to talk to you about that and how you're helping people out. Yes, we, um, I learned that term as well. I didn't know what BOGO meant, but <laughs> buy one, give one. So whatever you're buying, you're giving. So you're also giving so much to yourself, simultaneously giving something to others. So it's a win-win. It makes mm -hmm. you feel good mm -hmm. either way. What's the most fun thing you get to do on a daily basis here? What, what do you look forward to the most when you come in? Well, it never gets old because I, whether you practice the same pose over and over or similar sequences, you're always developing internal qualities of stress resilience, um, changing with, with uh, transitioning beautifully and strongly. Um, the only constant is change, so we learn to come in and out of change here with strength and resilience and grace. And of course, I always say we practice on the mat for benefits off the mat, and we really um, are using all of the qualities that we learn here um, by going with this change. We now are in a pandemic, and um, we had to, you know, we had to reinvent ourselves. We have mm -hmm. virtual yoga now. Okay. So um, people that don't want to come into the studio can practice from home. We have people practicing from different states, even different countries. That's awesome. So it's amazing. That's fantastic. How about this? Like, you know, you have a lot of competitors and, you know, so is, are, are, what are you doing to really set yourself apart? I mean, the Zoom stuff, that's really fantastic. Uh, you know, what else? The BOGO, is the BOGO kind of your own concept as well? Or is so that I think what sets us apart, um, 
I think any yoga is great yoga. There's so many different variations of beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, every teacher brings something new. Um, but our studio is nonprofit, so that's what sets it apart. Um, whatever you buy, you're donating. So mm -hmm. that's a, that's a feel-good aspect of it as well. How about this? For the people at home, it's a stressful time. Like, w w what advice can you give or what exercises could maybe people do that's simple enough, like it, whether it be breathing or yeah. the expert? Just noticing your breath. Noticing its quality, noticing the air as it enters your nostrils, noticing the air as it exits. Mm -hmm. It gives you an instantaneous sense of calm and presence. Around the holidays, I always say presence is your greatest present. So it's a gift that you can give yourself whenever you want. Um, so these tools are within, and we learn on the mat to tap into our powerful tools within. And why shouldn't everyone experience that? People that can't afford it, you know, yoga can be expensive. So it's nice to provide vouchers to people that don't have access to it. That's wonderful. So Mary, would you mind giving us a little demonstration of some of the breathing exercises? Absolutely, it would be my pleasure. All right, we're gonna get on the floor. Jimmy's gonna join us, it's gonna be a good time. Let's do it. All right. All right. So we're on our mat here, and maybe every time you come to your mat, you're going to instantaneously feel a little bit of calm. And look at you both gravitated to an easy pose. It's called Sukhasana. And it's a nice pose to just ground yourself, center yourself. So even before warming up, we imagine grounding and planting ourselves into the earth, towards the earth, and even imagine planting yourself into this moment. So a little bit of presence and just gather that by connecting with your breath. As you inhale, notice the air entering your nostrils. Notice that brief pause. And then notice the air as it exits your nostrils. And another pause. So your tailbone energy is the root chakra area. It's the energy of hominess and security and comfort. So as we come in and out of poses, I also talk about the energy that we're moving. So here, it's your first chakra. Let's bring our hands to prayer. Maybe your thumbs to your heart center, maybe gazing towards your fingertips, feeling your heart beat against your thumbs. And it's a beautiful time to set an intention for your practice, for your day. You could even pick a couple of words to use as a mind tool, a mantra. And you repeat them over and over to yourself. Visualization is a huge part of yoga. Your body listens to what you visualize. It responds to it. So make it something powerful, empowering. And then bring your hands forward. Place them on the mat in front of you and just stretch forward and just notice how your spine expands. Just stretching, warming up a little bit. And then glide your hands behind you, fingers back. Open up your heart center, Anahata Chakra. So obviously physically your heart, but energetically the energy of gratitude, the energy of love, compassion, and forgiveness. So inhaling any one of those qualities and exhaling, releasing anything you don't need. Nice. And then come back, bring your hands in front of you, maybe roll onto your knees. This is called your tabletop position. You can come into a cow by lifting your chin, your chest, your tailbone, your heels, your belly drops. Hmm. And then come into a cat, tuck your chin round your back. Ooh. Extend your spine. That was hard. <laughs> so inhale, drop your belly. Move to the rhythm of your breath. Exhale, extend your back. And then come back into a neutral spine. Flex your feet and push into your toes and lift your knees off the mat. This is your down dog. Mm -hmm. It may be your first inversion of the day. Whenever your head is below your heart, it provides fresh blood and oxygen to your brain, hmm. serotonin, endorphins. It's said to instantaneously boost your mood. Wow. 
So maybe feel some movement in this pose, bending one knee at a time. And then a little stillness. Gaze in between your thumbs and then step on up. Inhale for a half lift. Exhale, fold forward. And then sweep your arms overhead and gaze at your thumbs, your wrists in prayer. Maybe bring your thumbs down towards your heart. Samastahiri. Gaze to your fingertips. And then enjoy your mountain pose when your hands come down and you relax your shoulders away from your ears. This is Tadasana, mountain pose. It's also very grounding. And just breathe and notice how your breath affects your pose. Notice how your pose affects your breath. They're just beautiful shapes. It doesn't matter how deeply you get into your poses. It doesn't matter what they look like. It matters how they make you feel. It matters the qualities you built. Would you like to do another pose? I would. <laughs> yes, please. Okay. So remember to modify your poses. You are your best teacher. I'm your guide, but you really are your best teacher. You know your body's history, your body's injuries. So modify whenever you need. There's no perfect pose. This is a practice. Practice makes better. Never perfect here. So, and it's a lifetime practice. It's always challenging. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. So inhale your arms overhead. Interlace your fingers. Release your index fingers, cross your thumbs. And then just stretch to the right. This is called your half moon. You're making a half moon shape with your body. Compressing your right side, extending your left. Just breathe and stretch. And then be patient and still. And then come back to center. Lengthen. Exhale left, hips right. So these are different versions of wonderful, right? Nobody's pose looks the same. We just breathe and stretch. Mm -hmm. And then come back to center. Again, another open-hearted pose. Bring your hips forward, gaze to your wrists, and maybe draw a line on the ceiling from one tile to the next, opening up your heart center, compressing your spine, and breathing. Come back to center, and then bring your arms down for Tadasana. So we just had a great relaxing time, learned a couple new poses. How about this, can you tell us a little about your community partners that you've been working with? Of course, we have 10 community partners, and we picked the west side of Red Bank because we are the hub of most of the the charities and nonprofits that we work with. So we work with charities like 180 Turning Lives Around, Lunch Break, Steffi's Place, mm -hmm. Bloom Again, The Beauty Foundation, JBJ Soul. They're all within blocks away. Um, so these are the charities that you could donate your classes to. Uh -huh. When you come in and practice, you pick whatever charity resonates with you most and they receive those free vouchers and come practice with us. That's awesome. It's so helpful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Of course. And then we have uh, our website has uh, uh, all of their missions on uh, stated in there and as well as our, um, our schedule. We're also on Instagram. We update mm -hmm. every day. Good. Do you ever do yoga with the family? Is of, there course, yeah. of course, of <laughs> course. For my birthday present every year, I, that's what I want for them to all come in. So sometimes I have to bribe them with that. I said it's a gift for mom, so and it ends up being a gift for themselves. So that's awesome. yeah, they all come in, and uh, Matthew's football team came in from RBC. Um, a lot of uh, St Stephen's friends come in too. You know Stephen, you were in a band together, Great bass musician. player. Great yep. family all around. <laughs> Very talented, hardworking, and yep. you love to help people, and that's that's and what's important. And my daughter really helped me get the studio started technolo with technology, and mm -hmm. and uh, we're on the Mind Body platform, so you could sign up on Mind Body. But what we need right now really is um, is more of our our local businesses to sponsor. Like we we have a lot of. Um, corporate sponsors. So if you're a sponsor of Open Heart Yoga, so if you're a corporate sponsor, you uh, enable your employees or supporters to practice here. You receive 100, um, 100 passes to practice. Sure, that's yeah. great. 
All right, well, I'm having fun. I get to wear my socks. Mm -hmm. I don't often get to do that, so I'm digging it. It's a great atmosphere. I encourage everyone to practice breathing and come here and get some lessons. Thank you so much for everything. Open Heart Yoga, Mary Ansel, we had a great time. Thank you so much. Kyle Ward, show us everything. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>going on it's jimmy g movement is medicine grit determination strength young charismatic a never give up mentality those are words and phrases that remind me of kevin higgins of stone fit performance and i'm so thankful to be sitting with you during this pandemic uh, a, a great story you are uh, kevin great to be with thank you thank you i appreciate it i appreciate you having me yeah a lot. awesome stuff dude stone fit performance uh, talk about it talk about uh, the last few months during the pandemic it's a great story yeah, well, I mean, the pandemic was definitely, at first, pretty scary. You didn't really know where the business was going to go, if it was going to succeed, if it was going to fail. Mm -hmm. You know, I think COVID in general, is, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs either made it or they didn't. You mm -hmm. know, there's a great uh, test to see who was really an entrepreneur and who wasn't. So, basically, after like two or three weeks with nothing, I was like, all right, well, you know, I was riding a lot of momentum going into it. And the only way to succeed from there was to continue it. So, I was able to take my entire business online. We, uh, we started online with adults, we started with our athletes, and uh, we did a test trial after the first day or two. We had over 300 signees, so they came in, and then from there they were able to register for classes through our website. We were holding anywhere between 10 to 15 classes a week, and they were all have a decent cool. amount of people in there. I love that, I love that. But even before getting into this, your story is really interesting. Uh, you were about to go play D1 football yeah. at Wagner. Yeah. Uh, my parents actually met there. Oh, okay, yeah, really? Uh, yeah, they met yeah. there. Uh, shout out to mom and dad. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But yeah, you were in nursing school, you, you had problems with family, and there was a lot going on. You really couldn't determine what you wanted to get into, no. and eventually you're yeah. here. Yeah, this actually kind of just fell into my lap. You know, it chose me, I should say. Uh, originally, I did commit to Wagner to go play there with my best friend. I really went there because my uncle, who was my biggest role model, lived right next door to Wagner. Okay. So he was a personal trainer, believe it or not. Okay. He did work for Verizon. He was a big time union guy but uh, my uncle had pancreatic cancer. So while I was a senior, obviously I was training to be, go to the next level, I was in school, mm -hmm. you know, doing everything I can, but I was also taking care of him. Mm -hmm. you know, I remember when he was on hospice at my house, you know, he went through a lot, so I did become almost like a stay-at-home nurse along with my other brothers and sisters. You know, I just kind of turned the page of football. I didn't really care about it as much. Mm -hmm. It was mainly family. You know, there's a lot more to life than just a game, and I wanted to become a nurse. So I went to Brookdale for a year, uh, taking my prerequisites, ready to get into the program. And then after the year, I have an uncle who is a local three super and a local one. If anyone doesn't know that, it's in New York. It's a plumbing union and electrical. Okay. So I have a twin brother, actually, and he's 100% <laughs> union guy, loves it. I went in. I was going to do it. I started working on the side, getting ready to take my test. So I dropped out of college. As I started doing it, I just didn't love it. You know, I kind of started to hate my life, went through like a little bit of a dark period. Okay. But no one around you obviously sees that. Exactly. I just started studying business. I was right, I'd write down everything that... I'm good at everything I want to do, my goals, and this kind of just took off. I actually, my boss's son at the time was a baseball player at Marlboro High School, and he was like, yo, can you get him ready? I know he used to play. So I started training him, uh, started posting about it, you know, a few questions here or there, and then my cousin, uh, Jenny, I don't know if you're going to watch this, she was like, hey, I need help with uh, losing weight, can you help me out? I wrote a program, didn't really think anything of it, so she ended up getting good results. So I took, you know, her message, I posted it few more questions and I said, okay, well, this is what I want to do. I love this. From there, I was like, the next 24 hours, this whole program is going to be free. If you slide up, just wow. send me your email. So I was like, you know what? I got to study marketing. How am I going to get an email list? Yeah. I got the email list. I had 214 people slide up. So from those 214 people, I dug into it. I was like, you know what? This next two weeks, I'm going to write this program. I'm going to do it myself. So I would record myself every day, the weight that I lost, how my body changed, and uh, three males, three females. And uh, they got sick results. I published it, and under like a uh, first week, we had over 500 sales. Awesome. And then it, from there, it was, that was it. Yeah. They brought me into Middletown South. They hired me as a coach. From there, I got one team to two team to three team, one town to two town to three awesome. towns. I remember it, in the beginning, it was a nonstop hustle. I was driving Staten Island to go pick up an hour of work, really anything I can get. A few questions that... Uh that I want to get into. Stone fit, sculpt your statue yeah. is the slogan. Yeah. Where's that come from? So in the process of me becoming, you know, where I am now, I would listen to podcasts and read as much as I can. And uh, I heard a Michelangelo quote that was, every block of stone has a statue inside of it, and it's the task of the sculptor to discover it. So to me, it was, you know, we are artists of our own life, and we can create whatever 
you know, we'd imagine. So when they say, like, chase your dreams, go after you believe in, like, it really is that simple. Like, you can create whatever life you want. So me, I wanted to create the life that I have now, and, you know, I have a lot more goals from here that I, you know, every day I'm chiseling at the stone to create, you know, what I envision. I love that. Um, and your block, there was just a giant block at one yeah, point. I didn't You're know chiseled. what I was going. Where do you think uh, the block is right now? What's it looking like for you? Right now, we only carved about the head. Okay. You know, there's still a lot, awesome. lot more to do. You know, my goal as an entrepreneur was never to make an income. It was always to make an impact. You know, I wanted to change as many lives as I can and hopefully get people to see life the way I see it, to basically go after whatever it is you want. And obviously, we're going through uh, a pandemic, COVID-19, yeah. believe it or not. Uh, talk about how StoneFit is adapting and doing things differently during this unfortunate time. Honestly, our online, I couldn't okay. be more thankful. What we have in our online is really special. So we have people from all over the country. We have people actually, uh, one guy in Norway, was, you know, that's super cool. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so all over it, the world. Yeah, all over the world. Nice. So it's starting to really blow up. And I'm extremely grateful for my girlfriend, too. You know, she, all hands on deck. My Excel sheets, she really put it in order. We have a Facebook group chat where we constantly bounce ideas off each other. Because not just hearing it from me, like I want everyone to hear your own experiences. What works for you, what works for him. Do you think like that is an angle where working out is going to go to with these big giant gyms and, yeah. and, and paying all this monthly subscriptions and stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, at this point, it might not even be necessary. You might just log on to your Zoom account with your yeah. favorite instructor and do it in your living room. I know that's what people have been doing yeah, in the you, past. You but see now, the mirror. You see the mirror. You mm -hmm. see the Peloton. Mm -hmm. You do tons, you know, beach body, all that. So I do see the fitness, you know, going in that direction. I still do athletes. I do one on ones. I do small groups. I do adults. Okay, we obviously all abide by our social distancing and our COVID guidelines. What is separating you from other athletic trainers I know that's a difficult yeah. question but what's making you uh, be successful at this at a young age I think the uh, personality in general uh, my father at a very young age the one thing I always took from the installed in us was separate uh, who you are from what you do you know I never want to be known as you know just a trainer I never want I want to be known as Kevin Higgins the person even in terms of football people didn't know me as like oh he's a big no not at all they knew me as me you know anyone I work with I want to work with you I'm not a textbook guy I'm not going to give you one program fits all because that's not it yeah. you know yeah, from a coach's standpoint you're a player's coach yeah right you adapt to each player you want to make each person you know what works for them not just what works for me and what has worked what works for you how can we fix it how can we adjust yeah for the viewers out there believe it or not i was a running back for wall high school <laughs> i'll tell you what i don't want to meet this kid in the middle he would have just completely snapped my <laughs> neck back my god not at all <laughs> Stone fit, bring it back here. Uh, where can people get involved? How can people maybe help your business or even be a part of your workouts? Uh, you can just email me, do anything you want. Email me, find me on social media. You can contact you know, either my girlfriend or Reed. Uh, or Reed is someone actually who kind of guided me in the business world. She helped me a lot. You know, She does tons of fundraisers actually. We did a co-drive not long ago for the homeless. She set up the ASPCA. So constantly helping people, she kind of installed that in me as well, is, is you know, as you grow, constantly give back. So my advice is tell me what can I do for you? 2021, obviously pandemic in 2020, it was tough and people want to uh, transition into a good year in 2021. What are some tips um, that you can let our viewers know about maybe losing weight or staying fit yeah. uh, that obviously will help them um, you know, from possibly you know, getting sick yeah, from, uh, well, with COVID-19. I mean, exercise itself, mm -hmm. right? It's going to allow your immune cells to perform efficiently, right? We're going to fight disease. We're going to decrease our stress. And your quality of life is going to go through the roof. So, I mean, the number one thing is get active, get healthy. Cut out the bad foods. Cut out, you know, not just foods in general because in the end, food is not just everything. You know, it's your stress. Where are you getting stress from? If there's something that's, you know, toxic to your life, you have to cut it out. Before we uh, get into some working out, you've shown me some techniques here. Yeah. Uh, let the viewers know your social media pages once again, your website. Yeah, yeah. So you can go to stonefitperformance.com. You can follow me at, at stonefitperformance. And uh, my Facebook is just actually Kevin Higgins. Let's uh, start jumping around, pumping some iron. Let's yeah, have a little I hope fun, you're ready. Kevin. Awesome. Kevin Higgins and Stone Fit Performance. We, uh, we got some ski things in front of us. What yeah. are we about to do so here? So what these are is our ski ergs. So normally we're in warm-up. 
We want to get our heart rate up, get some blood to the body. So this is my favorite full body warm up. What we're going to do is you're going to step back here. You're going to grab these, okay? You and Kyle can actually race a little bit. We're going to warm up with a minute right now. So he's going to come from his toes. He's going to squat down. He's going to pull. It's going to be one motion on his way down. Let me see real fast. Okay, chest stays up. Quick pull past his knees. All right, we're going to go for time right now. So we're going to go a minute into it. They're going to get going. Get some blood. Oh man, he's flying. Kyle is flying. Make sure you keep your chest up though. Hips come down, chest stays up. All right, you want to see what's in front of you. You want a minute? Um, one minute? Yeah, right now you're about 15, 16 seconds into it. You got a lot to go. Okay, make sure you're pushing yourself. Have a good tempo right now. Okay, deep breaths. Okay, it is still a warm-up. Remember, we got a lot to do. Come on, we're on our final 10 seconds right now. Let's go. We're almost there. Three, two, one. Good job. <laughs> right now we can actually each get a, grab a jump rope. For what? You got 284, he got 296. Kevin, I was reading something about your clients. You started uh, with a younger group, but now it's younger, older, it's a mix of everyone, a great clientele base. Yeah, everyone wants to join. So originally I had started with adults, but I've always wanted to work with athletes. So once I got my foot in the door, I was able to push my athletes. And then athletes kind of took off. I was more than grateful. And then as I was training these athletes, I would talk to their parents, like, hey, why don't you wake up 5 a.m., 6 a.m.? We'll get after it. And then it kind of just took off from there. So now it's definitely both. Great. Good balance. Morning's all my adults. Afternoon's all my athletes. Sweet. We did skiing. We did jump roping. Kyle and I, I think, are, I guess, ready to do some burpees. Yeah, so we are gonna do burpees. We're gonna do a minute of this, and then eventually we're gonna work up to, we're not right now, because we're not there yet, physically. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we'd like to do, we're gonna rest 30 seconds in between, and we're gonna do it directly from the top, nonstop, three rounds. That's normally how we'd warm up, about 10 minutes, and then we get right into the workout. Awesome. All right, so let's go. We got a minute of them. Three, two, and let's go. <laughs> this one's not gonna be fun. Make sure you pace yourself though. You don't want to be the guy who comes in, goes 200 miles an hour, and then doesn't make it. Come on, challenge yourself. Try to get one a second right now. Come on, at least 10 more, at least 10 more. All right, we got 11 seconds. Let's go. Push it, push it. Right, you want to finish each round stronger. Each round's got to be stronger. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, and go. We got a 30 second rest before we start over from the top. It's Jimmy G wrapping up that stone fit performance with Kevin Higgins and we just got into a little workout, nothing crazy. Uh, I'm sweating though, but I think <laughs> the one thing about personal trainers is, you know, Kevin's a genuine good person, local kid from Mid Middletown South and uh, definitely uh, a guy you want to work out with, a guy you want to bring your kids and family to. So, Kevin, thank you for, uh, no, I appreciate it. for letting us hang out here yeah, interviewing no, you. you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it has been fun. Once again, uh, where can people find your information? You can find it at stonefitperformance.com. My handle is at stonefitperformance or just Kevin Higgins on Facebook. Kevin Higgins, a pleasure. Good luck with everything no worries, uh, throughout man. 2021. You and uh, It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Show us everything, a fun episode, Movement is Medicine. I'm Jimmy G. And I'm Kyle Ward. Uh, it's been a pleasure at Stone Fit Performance, thanks to the great Kevin Higgins from Middletown South. Uh, moving, movement is medicine during this pandemic. You get moving, you get working out, uh, your brain focuses on other things other than COVID-19. Uh, and it's been a pleasure, you were stretching Pretty, uh, pretty crazy at the yoga place. I was getting zen. We were at the open <laughs> yoga, open heart yoga in Red Bank with Mary Ann Sell, learning about how she's giving people a positive mindset and helping out the community. So it was great. I'm gonna try to uh, find a bubble bath or get in the shower and scrub down because Kevin absolutely whooped us into yep. shape here at Stone Fit Performance. Show us everything. We'll see you next episode.